We gon' have fun. We be on fire. We be lit lit. Check it, check it, check it. It's a unique hustle. It's your boy ECO, and I'm here with the lovely, amazing, official. Who is this? The official Miss Jamaican. You already know my dad won't go on. Man. But anyway, let me let y'all know this. Y'all need to make sure you follow us, subscribe to us to all social media platforms. I'm talking TikTok, I'm talking Facebook, I'm talking Instagram. You name it, we're on it, but we're also on Patreon right now. And that's the only place after a while you're going to see our full length interviews. You're not going to see them on YouTube anymore. YouTube only going to have our shorts. So, you know, y'all have that little pocket change that y'all have. That, that's all it needs for us so that you can keep enjoying our footage our great content. The content man hey man we got a guy here today guy he come by the way of e family of course this guy right here man don't really need no introduction man pjf shop been on here for listen man wait a minute man this ain't nothing but some balls exactly you know we keep it in the right deck man intro. everything is always set for this guy to be on this set this my guy man stop playing it's a demand don't say nothing but some balls this guy, man, listen, man, I locked in with this guy, man, and to be honest with you, you know, this guy right here, ever since I've met him, been straight up, bro. Yes, sir. I want to thank you, bro. Every time I came to ATL or anything, you always was. And it look, it's always been recuperated with you the same way, so, you know, I definitely appreciate the love that y'all show me when I'm in y'all town. So. Man, listen, man, it's you in Texas again, man. And and to be honest with you, anytime I know you you in and out this time, but I'm just glad that you stopped by, man, to rock out with us, man. That's mandatory. This is my this is a stop that I got to make anytime I come in this area, man. I got to stop by and see boss talk and how that E and uh, Miss Jamaica, that's man. Mandatory. Boy, that feel good, man. That mean we doing something right, man. Exactly. And man, so so what's been up with the music? Let's talk about it a little bit. Oh man, we we back in motion. We, we back in motion with the music. I had to a break. Uh, you know, life issues, family, kids, uh, you know, and just kind of push the music to the side for a second. But I'm back now, and I'm, I'm I'm engaged, back doing music, um, capturing content, doing videos. Got new projects on the way on uh, the resurrection of Chad Butler, Narcos Two. Am I feeling working on like three different projects at one time? And um, we're just back trying to get the ball rolling, man. Yeah, I love to see the way how you be. Um, balancing kids and work life because when I look on your Instagram, you always posting them on your Instagram and everything like that. And I love the love that I see. Right, right, right. I try to be just transparent with um, everything wide open with a lot of stuff. I want people to know, you know, I'm, I'm a real person. It ain't yeah. just what you hear in the music. You know what I'm saying? Don't, don't let that get you facade or phase by what, what real life has to offer and what goes on in real life. Exactly. <coughs> Do you think that... Um, any of your kids are going to come up in the music industry as well? Oh, man, they, they can rap. I don't they know. Can? They, yes. My daughter, she got it. It's natural. She just got rhythm. My son, every time he over there, he like, Dad, let's go in the studio. Let me mm -hmm. make a song. Mm -hmm. Let me rap. And I'm like, all right, let's go. Put do a beat on. They got, they got records. They do? Yeah, they got songs. You haven't put they them got, out? You haven't been pushing them? What's up with that? Yeah, well, I don't want to get them too caught into it. I'm keeping them focused on school. Right. You know what I mean? And then they into a lot of things. So I don't want to have them. Too many different ways. You know but I mean? you know what? Like I tell my daughter, because when she wanted to work and do other stuff while she I'm um, going to school and she's a straight A student, I right. told her, you know, go ahead. But the straight A's come first. You got to make sure that you keep that up at all times. Right. But if at any time I see that going down, then you're going to have to stop everything else. You know what I mean? But if you can maintain all of that, because life on a whole, you have to learn how to multitask as an entrepreneur, yeah. as, you know, they go off to college. They might want to have a part-time gig or start their own entrepreneurship. They have to learn how to handle all of that, so you better do it from early. So by the time they get older, it comes so it comes easy. To multitask. And, and exactly. I'm explain that to my daughter all the time. As long as I'm gray, straight, you know, you can do whatever you want. Exactly. So... so and then when I think about females in the rap industry compared to the boys, um, some people wouldn't push the girls to go into the rap industry. Some would just say, okay, I'm just going to push my boys. She needs to go ahead and be the business side of stuff. You don't think so? No, I don't want to say that. That's kind of sexist. but It is. You know. <laughs> but I've heard it before. Man, hey, man, I don't want to just jump in the conversation, but you said earlier that about that, uh, what was the name of that uh, the album that you're working on next? Oh, The Resurrection of Chad Butler, man. The, what, what? first of all, some people say, what make you even tap into 
Chad being that you you actually from way down you in you in Florida? I, I was born born in Florida. Born in Miami, yeah. Florida. Yeah. But I, I was actually you know raised most of my life in Atlanta. Okay, I got ties here. You know my daddy was here, born in Fort Worth, Dallas. So I got ties here. Dallas. I got ties throughout the South, Alabama, Memphis. So you know I'm a country boy. If you want to really get to it, you know what I'm saying to be legitimate. But I'm from the South, man. You know what I mean? You can't just put me in one area. So how, what made you tap into Chad like that? Chad Butler is one of the favorites on it's this my show. Favorite artist, man. I grew up listening to Chad, man, and uh, he he really got me into music. UGK, Bun B, you know, I was a big fan of their music, man. And, shh, I used to always want to be like Chad Butler, no lie. Which what, what was the what was the song that that mostly stuck out to you when you when you really tapped into Pimp C, man, or UGK? Ah, man. Probably have to go back to um, I, I want to say "Pocket Full of Stones." But I heard so many songs before that that kind of got me engaged to them. Um, "Pimpin' Ain't No Illusion." Man, um, man, look at me, man. Yeah. That look got at so me. many, you know what I mean? It's yeah, too hard. I yeah. Gotta, I, I think I just caught on to all of it. Everything yeah. he dropped was just like glass to me. I was just into it. Kid, you 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 remember when he went to prison and all that? All of that, man. I, I, everything that hurt me when he went down. You know, I liked the way he he was always expressing himself about the South. We get on radio shows, he wasn't holding back by nothing. He had to express and say he was, you know what I'm saying? Um, just wide open with with what he felt, and I, I appreciated that. I loved his um accent. I loved the way he talked. That country slang on the track, yeah, like it was just all you know. What I'm saying it represented the South, and that was what I represented. So. But, but what what about what that time when he jumps on the radio in, in, in Atlanta and he he just go down through there on the fact of how he felt about and he really was calling a few people out on it, <laughs> but he didn't really just it was kind of subliminalish. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> That's the film. He can do that. You feel me? He can I, do that. I remember I came to Atlanta and them dudes were like, man, you know, Pimp just went off on, on Atlanta. I said, nah, for real. Right, and that's right. kind of, I was in Atlanta, I remember right after that. And it was like, it was a thing where he really was just telling people to sharpen up. Yeah, like, y'all like, lying on these tracks. <laughs> like these price, which I get some square for, man. Like, I'm telling you. You, you were laughing, laughing <laughs> way. <laughs> <laughs> no man, so no, like like I know Bun is one that he's more like lyrical. Like they, I hear stories about Bun B that uh, that basically um, like he, you know, when he dealing with the music, just how fast you know how professional he is. Uh, DJ Burn one was on on my show and he was telling right. me about how how he come down there and do a feature with somebody and it's it's like in and out. It don't take as long. The young boy, they trying to, uh, uh, what they call it when they jumping in, jumping, what they call it, baby? Punching. Punching in. Punching man. in. They, they punching in while, while, while Bubby walking out, man. <laughs> <laughs> I can go for that. You know what I'm saying? Uh, sometimes I get in the studio, I do punch ins, you know, so I can't knock them. And then a lot of times I sit at home and I write my music before I even go in the studio. Um, dealing with an artist like that, Bun, man, I would already have my shit prepared. You'd you know have what to. Mean? Not going there trying to create unless you just felt that vibe from the beat and y'all got it and it was just there. Okay, you know it's gonna it's gonna come off your tongue like that then. But you know what I'm saying? If you're not feeling it, you really trying to get in there and push something out. I wouldn't even waste that man's time like that. You know yeah, I mean? yeah. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Too much of a legend to be in there playing with like that in the studio. I wouldn't do that. I gotta ask you this question, man, because we had uh, takeoff. We lost takeoff, and right, uh, right, right. it was in H Town. Um, you being down in Atlanta, you know, just. Uh, you know, we I, I frequent Atlanta. I'm always down through there or whatever. But just kind of that whole that whole vibe down there now, like with, with him being gone. Uh, wh what was it like when y'all heard about that down there? I mean, it devastated the city. They shut the city down for the funeral. Um, I mean, Amigos meant a lot to the city. They had a lot of records that the city was behind. The mayor they did a lot of things for the you know community and stuff like that. So it hurt when he when he died and the city felt it. Know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. I definitely a big fan. I, met, I got to meet him once. I ain't meet at Magic. I met him, but he was real laid back. Right, right. We brush shoulders from time to time. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? But I never knew him just like that. But yeah. I, I could always tell he was just a real humble dude. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. So. What about just being out? I know you wanted to be uh, having to be out late nights, dealing with the party scene. Yeah, you have to because right. the job that you guys pick to be in, be a part of, like, like what is the uh, what is the how do you move 
it during these times. How do you move? Yeah, I'm asking you. you. I'm sure old you, now. You make sure you move. <laughs> you know what I mean? He can't be sitting there hanging around in areas you know you ain't protected in and you ain't comfortable in and this ain't your sex and you need to be, you know what I'm saying, move, especially if you ain't got the right type of security around you. Yeah, yeah. And you in the type of environment where you around a bunch of niggas that, you know what I'm saying, ain't got what you got. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. And, and a lot of people ain't happy for you. Most people just there, you know what I'm saying, to watch. Yeah, you know yeah. I, mean? I agree with that 100%. I really, I really think that, you know, when you look at, like, just the whole rap scene on the whole, we got to start looking at it more towards the entrepreneurial part where we can start building our people up, man. Definitely. You know what I'm saying? I think that's I think that's a part where we hadn't unified enough. I think we kind of disconnected because of the money a lot of times. Everybody was thinking somebody might dig in their pot some kind of way so a nigga just stay away from them. Right, right. You know what I'm saying? But we we got to figure out a way to come back together so we can help each other to understand, you know, just, you know, how to build our people up. I'm being real. That's what I think. No, facts. You're speaking facts. I yeah. definitely need to go on. Um, entrepreneurship is real big, especially with these artists. They got the, the opportunity to do it and bring their people up mm-hmm. and, and, and offer those jobs, positions, and those opportunities. So it definitely need to be something that's talked about and brought to the forefront about the artists that get the opportunity, you know, to help others. You know what I mean? Yeah. But the thing that I see with some of those opportunities is um, a lot of youngsters coming up, rap artists coming up, and get the opportunity, but to have themselves and their immediate family, but still don't want to, I want to say step up their game when I say that, meaning maybe move out of the city, maybe come, just like you say, you can't have certain people around you at all times, especially when you come in like this, they look at what you have right. and sometimes they can want it. Right. So, but some pe- some artists be like, I got to help my whole city. I got to be able to help all of these people around me first before I even elevate myself. Right. Do you agree with that? No, I don't. Uh, you know, but they come from life experiences, you know, growing and going through things and know that you can't you can't save everybody. And you definitely need to build up your house before you try helping somebody else build this. Yeah. So you got to just think about, you know what I'm saying? It, at the end of the day, it is self-preservation out here. Right. You know what I mean? Not to be selfish or anything, but you always got to think about self. You know, make sure you you in a position where you good before you think about doing for others. Because you can always reach back later on and help if you choose to. But sometimes during that time, I think, and I'm always going to put God in it. I was like, God, really just open your eyes to who's really mean you well. Because a lot of times people mean you well, even when you're elevating and they're still here, they're still going to be motivating you, pushing you on and stuff like that. They're not going to be always be, you know, um, arguing about, well, you're not helping me. Why you ain't giving me no money? Da, 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 so stuff like that. All right, all right. No, it's it, <clears throat> it's something else, man. Like I said, just just when you come from a place where people not used to having something and then they get opportunity to have something, I think it's a learning stage in there that people don't really talk Definitely. about. That's, that's you know what, what I'm saying? It's a learning stage. And a lot of people ain't, ain't you know, financially intelligent enough to know, you know what I'm saying, what to do with the money sometimes. Mm-hmm. So they get it and it's their first time having this amount of money. And, you know, we all have been there before. We young. I mean, we done grown. We've been young before. Yeah. And yeah. fucked up some money. A lot of it. So, you know, they, they live and you learn, like I said, come with growth. You know what I'm saying? I know partners that have got in the rap industry, got their money, and felt like they had to take care of their mama and their cousin and their uh, little brother. And, you know, and went broke behind it. You know what I'm saying? And not, not ain't nobody there to help them. Yeah, yeah. So you really got to be in that position to make sure, like I said, that you're able to do what you're doing. You know what I'm saying? Cause a lot of people take advantage of you just trying to get over. So. Yeah. Now I, I you got you got a, a relationship with uh Derez Deshaun and uh I had him on the show when I was in ATL and I didn't get to see you when I was down there either, but he came and, and hang out with me. Right. And uh yeah, I did get to see you. Oh, we I went out to eat. No, no, we went out to eat. Me and you ain't get the interview. I didn't get the interview, but we went out to eat. Yeah, there you go. Cause I was like, I know I had to see him. But anyway, he came on the interview and he was like, um, he said basically that uh, he was, he, he, this pain style, we was trying to get to the bottom of it. Right. Who started this pain style? And he said he'd been doing it since he was some other name. He was, he was something before he was Derez Deshaun. Debo. Debo. He uh-huh. said this style, he did he wasn't under the same name, but he'd been doing it a long time. Him right. and T Rail. T Rail was having a back and forth about that, <laughs> just who did it the longest, you know? And, uh, I think T. Rail ended up saying he was the first. He he still hold true to it. Mm-hmm. But how long have you been seeing him do that style? I gotta ask you about that. Man, I think T. Rail's been kind of harmonizing, singing, you know, 
since he started rapping, you know, he just started doing it more. Now that it became big, but it's always been a part of his style, you know what I mean? A part of his rap. Even when he used to do, you know, just the Debo hardcore rap, he still had that harmony from time to time, you know what I'm saying? That different cuts in his verses. So yeah. he's been there, you know what I mean? Yeah, that's crazy, man. Just just the fact of how that style kind of done permeated everything and kind of slipped in and, 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 and kind of paved the way out of the, you know, the R&B thing. You I'm know, facts. I, I'm in, I'm everywhere. I'm listening to artists. I'm like, damn, that's the Riz? That's the Riz? Nah, I, 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 multiple times. So he don't really, you know, set away what people got got his sound. You know yeah, I mean? yeah, yeah, yeah. He, he kind of trendsetted on that, mm-hmm. didn't he? Definitely. Yeah, and, and, but, you know, when you got something special, people got to understand people are going to reduplicate it. They're going to try to, you know, try to, try to mimic it. It's something that 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 people you know when it's good people gonna try it. Thanks. So I, it's okay to, for people to to try to use your style. You know, people used to say they'll call people and ask them, "Can I use your style?" And all <laughs> <laughs> I'm so I, I'm glad I got one that's hard to do. You're me. different, man. <laughs> Boy, <laughs> hey, co- hey, listen, man. Cocaine brought me everything, man. That's one of my favorite jams by you, man. For real, for real. Well, you gotta hit a remix. That's why I was like, "What? You already put? Your, is it out yet?" It, it, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna say that one. Narcos, Narcos, those two, uh, everything remix got somebody on there. You know what I'm saying? Really, yeah, they gonna like. It. Man, gonna like it. that's hard, man. So, man, uh, look, man. All, all I gotta say is, man, you, you, something else. You different. And like, when you come to tell you, you got to tap in with Boss Talk, I had to get you on the set today. Uh, we, I was like, man, I got to get my boy Shaw. He coming to tap? Oh, we got to be on here, man. Right, so right. thank you for coming on the show, man. Uh, let people know. How can people get a hold of you, bro? Man, I'm PGF Shout on every platform, on Twitter, on Snapchat, on TikTok, on Instagram. No matter you type me in, PGF Shout, YouTube, um, I'm all over the board. That's it. You got to answer me this, too, before you get off of here. Who popping in, in ATL right now? Young boys that, you know, I always be trying to figure out who next. I think he told, who did he tell me last time? Oh, that, God. That, just has well, to ah, the Riz told me somebody down there. I done forgot the dude's name, oh, boy, too. Atlanta, man. If he said the same name, I'll know it. Yeah. Who is it? Music wise. For you, right yeah. Now. For you. I'm, I'm going to tell you straight up, man. Um, my little homie on G5, man. That ain't that's it. Not, that's not G5, G5, G5 that one? He like that. He like he, that. He, 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 he coming up. Uh-huh. Is he working like you were working? Like you was working when you first come in the game? He working. He, he working. working. Yeah, he working. He been continuously working, no breaks. So might be going a little bit harder than me. Really? Yeah, he working. Man. Yeah. Well, I'm going to be looking out for it, man. Like I said, I always like to get that shout out, man. I appreciate you for coming on the show. We love you, bro. You know when I come to ATL, I'm tapping in. I'm, I'm calling. When I land, you're going to get that same little signal you sent me today. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Right, right, right. <laughs> Thank you so much, man. Appreciate yeah, the man. love, man. Always love. Man, hey, it's been another great segment of Boss Talk 101, where the bosses talk. And we out.